This visual novel may contain mature slash suggestive themes by proceeding you agree that your appropriate age to your respective country to be exposed to these kinds of materials. So by continuing to watch, you're agreeing to... Hey, we're trying the Where the Demon Lurks today because I thought the art looked really, 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 really good. And that's pretty much my entire motivation for half the indie games I check. <laughs> Prologue to what? A bloody red light tears a hole through the middle of the office room. The demonic light caresses the countless books held against the walls. Walls. <laughs> walls? Tomes that had surely outlived the duties of many a demon lord. Though, for all the secrets and worlds kept between their pages, you had seen enough of them. The light rips apart further, a portal from which you step into the otherwise fairly regular room. A glass bookshelf to your left is bathed in red-hued light, reflecting your figure. If the, horn, uh, if the horns, the yellow iris, and the blue flame over your head did not give it away, you are a demon. And a Mario fan, apparently. Reaching the edge of the desk, you drop your hand against the hardwood and drag it along the surface until you take a seat behind the table. Today, you begin your reign over the spawns of the underworld as the almighty judge of the world's sinners. Today, you will make a mark on the world. Another portal opens up in the middle of your office. That familiar, portly, demonic gut mouth sticks out first. That was very suspiciously timed. <laughs> Eventually followed by the dark, bluish figure you know as Vendrake. The right-hand demon of every single demon lord thus far in the flesh. His shirt is so primly tucked into his pants that you wonder how long he spends checking himself out in the mirror every morning. The insistence on tucking in the shirt that's open is funny. The demon's slow gait combined with his slightly raised chin exudes confidence. If you didn't know any better, You'd think he owned the place, commanding the room with his eons of experience. Despite your place as the Demon Lord, you can't help but acknowledge that this demon is older, wiser, and holds just as much power as you do. Congratulations, my lord, on your first day in office. Today, you will be having, or you will be having an orientation. I went ahead and got your name card ready. Please check if your name is spelled correctly, my lord. All you have to do is think of your name and the ink will solidify. Please don't turn it into Sir Buttface like you did in your youth. The portly demon hands you a small rectangular piece of plastic. On the top, there's the title Demon Lord Probation. <laughs> Yeah, let's, 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 it could just be Kobu. The black ink glows white and solidifies upon the name card. Excellent. Now we have a lot of ground to cover. Vendrake snaps his fingers and a large file labeled Demon Lord Orientation appears between his hands. Gay. <laughs> a file looks big enough to be classified as a weapon. You feel sick to your stomach by the mere sight of it. Vendrick, is this really necessary? I've basically spent half my life around here. Yes, and the other half on Earth, where you should have been studying our rules and regulations. Am I going to be getting sass from you the entire time we're working together? You do know I'm the boss now, right? Forgive me, my lord. It is just that there is so much on the line, and I must ensure that... As your right-hand demon, the Underworld's affairs run smoothly. After all, your father left his greatest legacy on you, this kingdom, and all its inhabitants. Your shoulders fall from the weight of Vendrick's words. Yeah, he did a lot for the Underworld. That's why I want to get straight to it. I've got big plans for the Underworld. You know, get a think tank going on with the other generals. Might maybe pick their brains about what they th think needs improving. Vendrick rubs his forehead and frowns. With all due respect, the underworld got where it is after years of meticulous work by your father. I'm sure all the demons are fine with how things are, so you don't need to rush in and start changing things up. 
Just maintaining the place is already good work. No, I disagree. The underworld's great and all, but there's always room for an upgrade. Isn't that part of keeping the underworld running well too? Either way, the other generals are already scheduled to meet you after orientation to give a personal presentation on their job scopes. That sounds so stuffy. It's the way things have been done during your father's time. That's how we orient all new recruits. Just be glad you get the live presentation and not the pre-recorded ones. I don't want to come off as one of those snooty bosses that hides behind his desk all the time. It'll be good to meet the generals in person and show that I'm relatable and approachable. I got a Mario shirt. <laughs> Might I remind you, my lord, this is a workplace, not a social club. And let me remind you who's the one wearing the Demon Lord name tag. <laughs> I just can't get over the name tag. It's the least intimidating thing you could give to, like, the lord and boss of all things. I don't think CEOs tend to wear name tags. They're too- they're supposed to be more important than that, honestly. It, I feel like they could have introduced it as, like, a- his life- his, like, his badge or his ID on some level that's, like, a more obscured thing he doesn't have to, like, wear all the time. A name tag implies that people won't know your name, as opposed to, like, Something more official and let and more discreet at the same time. Vendrake raises a finger to retaliate, but pulls it back. He frowns slightly, but to you, he's always frowning. Very well. I'll inform them that you will be visiting, and that they are to explain the full extent of their work. Briefly. Yes, briefly. But please, consider the consequences of your actions, my lord, before you do them. Now let's begin the orientation. Do you remember what form BTK95 is for? Um, I want to say a torture tool damage report. No, it's a place that should be on fire is not on fire report. Let us review. <laughs> you struggle to pay attention to Vendrake's le lecture. More than once you find yourself staring at the floor thinking about the next video game you want to get on Earth. Of course, each time you're caught not paying attention, Vendrake would slap the table loudly with his tail to bring you back to, uh, to the education at hand. He has a tail? Oh, he does. He's got a tiny demon tail with a little extra uh, stabby bit compared to ours. So the, the, the tails are kind of funny. They're almost like 2D by comparison. He goes into a long explanation about his role as chief of security, how his forces patrol the underworld to maintain order, and the various boring documents they fill out on a daily basis to do so. When Vendrick has finished his spiel and mini policy documentary, all you want to do is get out of the office and start meeting your crew. The portal opens upon Amara's workshop. Just one of the many office floors that compromise, comprise the never-ending soul-crushing depths of the underworld. Bright round orbs of light hover in the sky high ceiling, illuminating the entire area below. The space can be likened to a hangar filled to the brim with containers and machines. Large, powerful air vents stand where one would expect windows to reside. But then again, there's nothing that exceptional to see in the underworld, at least for you. Oh, look at him! <laughs> <laughs> As you walk towards the cat demon standing over his workbench, you recall your youth. You visit this workplace several times while growing up. Amer would always give you the newest toy he had created, which regularly ended up with him receiving an earful from your father. When you were older, you learned that, that the toys were actually experimental weapons. Still, you found Amer to be amusing. And now you have a chance to know to know him on a professional and personal level. Small spider-shaped robots scurry around the workshop, carrying pieces of metal, wires, and other technology you do not recognize. They're working to organize materials in the many large cabinets that line the workshop walls. The cat demon ha has yet to notice your presence. Instead, he is hands deep inside the back of what looks like a modified fridge. As he yanks random wires from the, from the machine, his translucent arms float above him to take notes. 
The sleek appearance of the magic-infused metal always catches your eyes. No other demon in the underworld possesses such a, such a device, and only a mare knows how to work them. You tap a mare on the shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, an intruder! The spider bots all turn towards you. The unmistakable hum of their blasters ch charging echoes through the warehouse. Uh, 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 Mayor, it's me. His hands do just float. They just disconnect. Oh, there are other hands that float. His other hands are behind his back. I'm impressed that he's got a arms folded behind your back posture when he's startled. You wave to the demon general with a laid back smile. Oh, Lord Kobu, retract kill command. A loud ping echoes throughout the workshop and the spider bots return to their original tasks. I'm surprised to see you here today, my lord. One of his floating arms tears off the note it was writing earlier and readies itself to jot down something new. Didn't Vendrake send out a memo that I'm coming over? Did he? Hmm. I've been so busy working on my invention, I hadn't checked my mail. Well, I'm visiting the generals to get to know you guys, since it's my first day and all. I want to know what makes you guys tick, so to speak. I see. If my lord wants to know about me, I have my specs right here. Display, display specifications. A large screen descends from the ceiling and turns itself on. It shows what little... It, what looks like a blueprint of a mare's body. As you can see, I'm made of about 90% carbon, 5% demonic energy, and 5% mystic metal. I function on a diet of lemon soda and fish sticks. In terms of reproduction, I have a... <laughs> Whoa, hold it. I didn't literally mean what you're made of. I mean, let, let, him, let him go a little longer. It's fine. I just want to talk and to pick your brain a, a little about, what, about your job. Would you like me to display the contents of my brain for you, my lord? I can get a machine to show you the, sh the shape of my brain in little time. A weak smile forms on your face. Okay, Amar. Let's start over. What are you working on here? Ah, yes. I received a call earlier about my asking if my refrigerator was running, and that I should catch it if it was. So I was performing a full diagnostic to see if my fridge had gained the ability to run, and to investigate what component gave it that new ability. Amar, that was a prank call. Someone was just trying to trick you. Oh. So my fridge didn't learn to run yet? His ears droop upon hearing the truth. I mean, y you could make it happen if you want to. Yeah. I can make it run after the souls and trap them in a black hole that sends them back to the never-ending cycle of running and getting trapped. His floating arms act fast and jot down his thoughts. You're relieved that the general bounced back so quickly. Gotta say, you have a lot of stuff here. Yes, I need them to fix or modify the torture machines we use. Since souls tend to become accustomed to their torturing over time, we need to change their hellish existence experience every so often. Add a torture randomizer to mix things up. Although, it sounds like you would that would take up a lot of resource and effort. It does, which is why I came up with the idea. As you know, we already have experience projecting the memories of souls. So what if every few hours we remove the soul's most recent memory so that the soul does not remember the experience of their torture? Then we can recycle the same torture method. Exactly! So why aren't you doing it then? I ran the proposal by the, with the research committee, but it's been stuck in the pending phase for over a hundred years. I just need to test a prototype somewhere. Hmm. I might be able to help. What if I grant you permission to test it with a few souls in the physical punishment zone? Really? That's all I would need to get started. Then we have a plan. I'll put it through after I'm done with my visit. I must get back and check on the device. Uh, if you'll excuse me, my lord. A mayor gives you a fastidious bow and rushes off towards one of his many cabinets to find his next machine. Just the right time for you to open a portal to head over and visit Fortis. In the cafeteria, I guess? Yeah. You step into a brightly lit break room which, with a table that looks absolutely massive compared to us at the moment. 
The smell of coffee and baked goods that used to be here at some point still lingers in the air. I have a journal. Oh, it's hard to see what's highlighted right now. What is highlighted right now? Oops. Journal. A mare. Ah. I just wanted to play Wowzer's Odyssey. Get it? Because of the, the the dragon everybody likes. I guess a, he's a turtle. On the left of the room is a table that holds the instant mixes, creamers, and sugars that workers use. The table itself is stained with telltale ring marks of the many drinks that were created upon it. You were drawn to the back by the smell of pepper, the kind you have smelt so often in Fortis's home. Back then you would train in your combat skills with him on weekends. At the end of a long day, he would make a big feast that incorporated his own blend of signature peppers for you and, and his giant siblings. Hello. He's got short shorts on. And a, just a general tracksuit, I guess? Yeah. And he's extremely top-heavy. It very easy to knock over. <laughs> you find the Rottweiler demon lounging on a beaten-looking sofa while squeezing a spring-hand grip. Bordis. Hey, boss, get over here! Fortis, volume. Whoops, my bad, boss. Wait, can I call you boss? Or do you prefer I call you my lord like everyone else? Uh, either way is fine, Fortis. You don't have to go changing for me just because I've got a new job. Heck yeah, boss it is then. Now that's a title of someone with, for someone with power. So, it's made you want to have this face-to-face -face meeting. I figured it would be best to, uh, best, uh, the best way to get off on the right foot while introducing myself to you guys as the new Demon Lord. Apparently I already know everyone, though. Well, look at you, being so thoughtful. For formality's sake, uh, what do you normally do around here? I know you run the physical torture area, but I bet there's more to it than just that. Heck yeah, there's more to it than that. I run a team of torture demons. That means coming up with the new torture techniques and planning out the work schedule so my staff can keep busy. We demons may be tough, but wear and tear happens if you keep pushing your team or yourself too hard. Besides, you can't grow muscles without rest. <laughs> Just the idea, like, it's good to practice self-care while torturing the damned for all eternity. <laughs> like, there's a very... There's a very asymmetry of care going on. That makes sense. As the second oldest general out of the lot of them, you got any ideas for improving your work? Heck yeah! His neck is popping. I recommend we start everyone on a protein-only diet. They'll never shit again. Oh, come on now, seriously. Then you've got to keep training! M me? Orta stomps his foot on the hardwood floor. You can't let a cushy CEO job turn you into ball of flab. Fortis, volume. Fortis coughs. Right, uh, don't think your underlings are loyal to you at a level alone. We're all demons, creatures born of chaos to manage chaos. The reason the demons serve the demon lord is because they all know he's fucking jacked. It's a paraphrasing. If you start showing weakness, someone's gonna get the bright idea they can take your place. That's why I'm doing this. If I can show I make the underworld better, they'll all know I'm as capable as Pa. You will be. You gotta believe in your mind's muscle. Huh? Just believe! Okay. Okay, I believe you. <clears throat> Moving on. Maybe you'll be interested in running an, a, an idea I have for advertising the underworld to the people on Earth. Like, rerunning those old dream ads? Nah, those won't work. People don't take dreams that seriously anymore. I'm thinking of, spent, of spreading fear about the underworld using the internet. You can do that with the internet? Well, yeah. What do you use it for? Uh... Stuff? Does Vendrick know about this? I'll, I'll let him know it later. It's one of the perks of my position. All the other perks are on the internet. Alright. Then, uh, I'll have to think up an idea for the ad video, and I'll ask Knox about helping you out. 
Maybe I can do a training video. You know, show how powerful our demons are. That ought to scare those mortals right down the right path. Yeah, you being in a video would be excellent incentive to behave and not be sent to hell. Nobody would want to be around this. Uh, sounds like a good idea. Glad you like it, boss. We're all set then. Sweet. I'll catch you later, but then, boss. I've got a group cardio session with the next batch of tortures before their shift starts. I thought you only torture souls. Hey, team exercise is good for morale. You might want to consider doing some too. You're getting a gut. It's a dad bod. People find it sexy. You're not a dad yet, boss. Or to sp <laughs> Why did he bounce? <laughs> or to spring. Oh, that's why, but this is the animation was wild. Or just springs up and waves goodbye before opening a portal to leave. We've all heard that hell is un as other people, but actually it's hell is all himbos. Right. All that's left is Nox. I wonder where he's going to be. You cast your you cast open your portal and step through. My office? Why am I back here? You see your desk right across the room. Walking over, you sense something off about your table. It's like looking at a line, and somewhere in the middle, someone drew another line on top of the first, giving your table a feel of disconnectedness between the left and right side. So there's an invisible person on, sitting on your table, or standing in front of it? Nox? Ah! What? <laughs> Something shimmers and ripples like water in midair, revealing the last of your generals. Welcome back, my lord. Nox, what are you doing here? You sent word that you wanted to see us generals in person, so I thought I would come over and save you the trip. Ah, thanks, but you didn't have to. I was actually looking forward to seeing how things are outside the office. Apologies, I'll make a note of that for the future. As you walk over to your desk, you notice a stack of papers that weren't there before. When you sit down, there's a sticky note attached to said paperwork. Here are the forms required, requiring your reviewing and approval. I started you easy with just a thousand documents to read. Vendrake. P.S. My position about the underworld is as, as a beacon of judgment since the days of your father still stands. Ugh. Vendrake. You turn your attention back to Knox. I'd say take a seat, but I see you brought your own. Knox responds to your attempt at a joke by blinking with a blank expression. His blink unsynchronized with each eye. It's... A joke. Because you're floating. Never mind. Nox floats closer to the front of your desk and puts a webbed finger on his chin. Interesting, my lord. Uh, you tried to use comedy to connect with me. Now, why would you make such a choice? Yeah. I don't... I don't know. It, it just felt natural. On that note, what is natural for a demon? Is the nature of a demon similar to a demon lord? Nox, come back to me. Uh, why don't we... Uh, we don't have the time for all your questions today. What, why, what would you ask of me then, my lord? I want to know what you do as the general of mental torture. Hmm. The demons under me rely on a lot more on our magic than, say, the demons of the physical torture area. We craft mazes and traps that inflict the most amount of suffering upon the souls. As you can imagine, it is very taxing on our psyche as well. Is there anything I can do to make your jobs easier? Don't mind us, my lord. We live to serve the ruler of the underworld until death deems it necessary. I see. Tell you what, would you be open to working with Fortis on an ad for the underworld? He might need someone to help him run the recording. If that is the Demon Lord's command, it shall be done. Right, uh, you have any ideas for a video? How about a video with the gentle sounds of rain falling in the forest? Then we play a very subtle recording, almost like a whisper, repeating the many terrible tortures we do down here. Then it'll be buried in their subconscious forever. Uh, I see why you're the general for mental torture. All right, let's run with it. As you command, my lord, I will not fail you. Is there anything else you want to share? Well, if you're asking. 
Why exactly am I a frog? Uh... You managed to answer some of Nox's questions with some half-baked answers until he satisfied, he's satisfied and returns back to his post. Even before you became Demon Lord, speaking to Nox has always been a brain-scratcher. Although you don't really know if you're even making sense, the frog keeps coming back to ask you what you think. Satisfied with the meetings you have done, you end the trip by approving Amara's machine testing. Still, there is a nagging sensation that you forgot something, but you're not sure what. You decide to ignore the feeling and get back to the tedious part of your work. It takes you the whole day to make a dent in the massive pile, but progress is prog progress. Why am I a frog? What does that mean? Is it because of a mental tort? Like, it's like, I manifest in the form you find most terrifying. Or was he created? What? What is that question? The initial burst of energy you find when you started tackling the paperwork uh, dwindles as away as hours pass, the pile of unfinished work still casting a shadow overhead. Even one complaint report even one complaint report takes hours for you to go through. Oh, well, then thousands is going to be a problem, isn't it? Still, you, sh you soldier on. When you grab the 20th report from the pile, a strong vibration rumbles beneath your feet. This sounds like it's designed to torture you. The pile of incomplete paperwork shakes, almost toppling over. What was that? The portal opens in front of your desk, and a furious-looking Vendrake steps through. My lord. Oh, Vendrake. I'm doing your job. I'm doing my job, okay? You don't need to check up on me. How can you be so calm? What? What happened? Vendrick snaps his fingers and a portal opens next to him. Amer is the first to step out of the portal. Amer? Amer looks at Vendrick, then to you with a dazed expression. Who is he? Vendrick smacks his forehead. That's our leader, Lord Kobu. Oh, right, right. Uh, hello, Lord Kobu. Amer, what's going on? Well, I tried out this new machine I invented just now at the, at the place where the demons do workouts. The physical torture zone. Yes, that. Then the machine just, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I can't remember. Exploded. It exploded. Both the mare and the demons caught in the blast all have selective memory loss. It's a train wreck out there. There are a dozen demons with no clue about what they're supposed to be doing. Every, some even got convinced that they should be tortured while the souls use the machines. Amer blinks emptily at Vendrick, then back to you. Don't worry, the effects will wear off in a few hours. Or was it a few weeks? Years? I, I don't remember how long I set the machine to. He looks back at the fuming Vendrick. Have you always had a throbbing vein in your forehead, Vendrake? Vendrake ignores Amer. It's utter chaos. And what else do I hear when my men go down to deal with the problem? Uh, there's more? Your words struggle to escape your throat as the rising fear holds your linguistic skills hostage. Vendrick snaps his fingers again to summon a new portal. This time, Fortis and Nox appear. How did everything go wrong so fast? A large dog demon is covered in frog-shaped footprints while Nox has huge bruises all over his small body. What happened to you two? Uh, it was a creative dispute on, on set, boss. He wanted to do his workout idea, but I told him you already approved my review video. No, he approved my idea first, so that takes priority. Quiet. These two were at each other's throat, literally. All the other staff were too busy watching their shenanigans to work. Some of the souls attempted to escape, and now I have demons running about trying to catch them before they make it to the gates. Uh... This is what I warned you about, my lord. Now, what are you going to do about this? Your, mon your mind draws a blank. Good start. I... The fear that you have single-handedly started the breakdown of the underworld fills you with an immeasurable amount of dread. Your eyes dart about, searching for someone or something to help you. Amer? He's still in a daze and appears unsure of where he even is. 
What about Fortis and Knox? The two are too busy staring daggers at each other. You are alone in this, and you don't know what to do. Vendrick seems to sense this and shakes his head. That's it. All of you back to your posts. Let our lord contemplate the next step. Whatever projects you were given, they're cancelled indefinitely. The other generals nod and exit the portal to carry out their, or their orders. Vendrick looks at you one more time and you feel the scorn of his gaze fall upon you. Did you see what you did? How could you let this happen? Hey, lay off, okay? I didn't know any of it was going to turn out like this. It's your job to know. That's why I was against you trying to bring in your juvenile ideas. Look at what happened. Watch your tone, Vendrake. I'm saying this for the good of the underworld. If you're half the leader your father was, you'd heed my warning and stop before making things worse. Get in line. It takes everything out of you to not just throttle Vendrake with your powers. No. You say so softly it's almost a whisper. I'm not going to give up just because of one setback. Well then, I'm not going to let the underworld fall. Not even because of you, my lord. Squeezing the report in your left hand, you feel the claws penetrating the already thick papers as they begin to bury through into your palm of your hand. Vendrake opens a portal and turns to leave. The moment the portal closes, you slam your fist onto the table. Damn it! Damn it! The sadness and anger that's been boiling up inside you threatens to spill out in waves. It, you, yet, you still tell yourself to keep it together. Keep it together. I'm the Demon Lord. I'm the Demon Lord. I'm... I'm not... Damn it. You spend the rest of your time contemplating your mistakes. Whatever determination you have left flickers like a dying matchstick. Still, you march on hoping to prove Vendrick wrong. Thus begins your tumultuous relationship with your second in command. That's a rough time. The, uh, it was one thing to have the unexpected consequence of just, like, hey, test out that machine. Uh oh. But, uh, how are you supposed to know that those two were just gonna get in a dumb fight and create a huge problem and then not actually confer with you over it? Like, th that's just those two misbehaving a bunch, basically. They need to get their shit together. Or anyone could have brought it up to you while it was a problem instead of waiting for hours. Because I'm trying to do the math here. He said he got through like 20 and every single one of them takes hours. So he's potentially been sitting here like for a week. I don't even know how much time passed. But they fucked up. Alright, I had to stop and do a three hour Final Fantasy XIV stream, but I'm back late at night, a bit more tired, but wanting to flesh this Let's Try out and give it a bit more story than what we got so far, so bear with me. <laughs> Meetings with Vendrake turn into more of a competition of who could press their thumb over the other more strongly. I say a longer lunch break will do everyone some good. No. 30 minutes has been the way for years. You're turning the workers into slobs. It reaches a point where it seems like he just purposely disagrees with you. Uh, pur purposefully... No, yeah, purposely disagrees with you if you ever try to do things outside of how your father ran the company. That's not to say your ideas were effective all the time. What's wrong with me approving the, per the proposal for a new vending machine in the mental torture zone? Did you check the list of items they requested for that machine? One of them is Hypno's Chocolate. That thing is going to make half the staff fall asleep. Oh. Crap. Despite the efforts of the other generals to show some compassion for your work, Vendrake's resistance somehow feels overwhelming. Eventually it becomes harder and harder to do anything new. Going to work is more of a drain on your soul. So, and at some point, you begin to wonder, do you want this job anymore? Before you know it, five years have passed. My lord, 
Ugh. The sharp voice, instantly recognizable as your second in command, rings through the, your office like cymbals crashing against your ears. You raise the handheld console you were using before Vendrake was so rude as to interrupt. Vendrake is fuming, his hands balled up tight and shaking with a building rage. My lord! Just go already, I'll be there. You wave him away. Vendrake lets out an uh, angry scoff and floats towards the door, slamming it shut as he leaves. With peace and quiet having resumed, you place the handheld console upon the table and sit back. You glance over your table. Piles of paperwork have stacked up, all awaiting your review and approval. In the far right corner is a photo frame of your father. Well, Pa, it's been five years. When is this job supposed to get easier? You frown at the photograph and slump over the desk with your head buried into your hands. This job has slowly been eating away at you each and every day. You pull yourself up and open your portal. Better get there, or Vendrick will blow a blood vessel. You make your way to the meeting room. A dry mood fills the meeting room, despite Vendrick tapping away at the table in frustration. All eyes turn on you as you enter the room. Hey gang, let's get this meeting started. Um, okay. Uh, I'll just take attendance then. Someone kill me. Amar, we know who's here. Can we just skip this? Never, my lord! We have to follow procedure. 70% of all successful meetings always start with the proper attendance call. And the, uh, this might not be a causality. <laughs> Additionally, we cannot discount the psychological effect of an attendance call to a demon attention. To a demon's attention. It releases... Alright, uh, just get on with it. Alright, okay, so, I, a mayor, General of Technologies and Weaponry, am here. Knox, General of Mental Torture? Here. Fortis, General of Physical Torture. Here. You plug your ears. The, the speaking is physical torture. Uh. Fortis? Uh, Fortis, must, must you shout every time? The loudest is the strongest at roll call. There is also strength in silence. You calling me stupid or telling me to shut up? <laughs> For, no, really, which is it? <laughs> Pay attention, you two. Yes, uh, let's just finish this. Vendrake, Chief of Security and Second in Command. Present, as always. Last but not least, Lord Kobu, ruler of the underworld and judge to all mortal souls. Here. On the outside, you roll your eyes. Or on the inside, you roll your eyes as your body nods towards the multi-limbed general. All generals have multiple limbs. Amar then proceeds to read the previous meeting's minutes. The minutes reading gro goes on for a good half hour. Amar lists the decisions made last time. The list includes adding more lava in the lava pit so the souls attempting to cross them get burnt easier, Amar's request for new tools for his workshop, and the rejection of Nox's request for a torture massage chair. <laughs> of course, it tortures you with a very annoying massage, because it's mental torture. Every general is listening intently to what Amar is reading. And that's it. Does everyone accept the minutes? I do! I still want to revisit the massage chair proposal, but I accept it. I accept, my lord. Yes, yes, let's carry on. Onwards with today's agenda. First of all, we lost two dozen new souls last Friday. Reports indicate a few physical torture demons were drunk on the job. This is a disgrace. Never in thousands of years have we ever lost souls like that. The souls literally walked back to their bodies and came back alive. Never? Never in the history of everything? Not like... Like a famous, like... Like legend of any kind? Where somebody escaped... Hades? Anyway, relax. We'll get them next time. 
I made those out of shape half wits squat until their legs turned to ashes. If Fortis has already dealt with the issue, why are we discussing this today? Amara's eyes dart between Nox and Fortis, as if to force them to speak. He then looks to you and smiles nervously. Uh, well, my lord, the demons were interrogated. They said they believed it was okay to drink on the job because they saw... Amar taps his fingers on his notepad. They saw... They saw you. Vendrick is standing up and pointing accusingly at you. They saw you drinking in the bar when you were supposed to be working. A chill runs through the meeting room as the others in the room avert their gazes. Leaning back, you cross your arms defensively. Your shoulders rise up, making you look smaller. Well, uh... I could have sworn I wore, wore a disguise that time. The demons look to each other, then back at you. Boss, it's not that you can't go drinking, but it might be best to avoid doing so during working hours. You set an example, whether you really, whether you realize it or not. What? There's no way. An what? There's no way anyone really cares. I saw one of my underlings wearing a colorful floral shirt and sandals while torturing a soul. Good for comfort but totally ineffective for mental tor mentally torturing a soul. I had to burn it to set an example for the others, show them how to do their jobs. He now works in the nude. You mean you, mean you burnt the clothes or the demon? Both. The frog, yawn the frog general yawns. He too appears to have lost interest in the meeting after saying his piece. But with Knox, it's always hard to tell. He's the type to keep his guard up no matter, what, no matter the company he's with. Boss, is something going on with you? Do you need more time to get used to the job? Maybe it's performance anxiety. Yes, uh, I could have a machine ready to look into your brain and let you physically punch out your anxiety in no time. Can we please stop talking about my issues? Your issues are why we're in this predicament in the first place. You lock eyes with your second-in-command. You know what? I've been listening to you- No. Arguing with you since day one. You're always in my business, and I have had enough. Amar, note this down. Vendrake, I'm suspending your role as second-in-command until you learn to be less of a thorn in my side. Your sudden outburst leaves everyone with their, their mouths hanging open, especially Vendrake. Except for not as sprite, though. Vendrake stands up from his seat, his protruding gut pushing the table to the side slightly. You can't. You growl as the general at the general and slowly stand up. His eyes narrow towards you. I implore you, my lord, to reconsider. Vendrake's hands are leaving dents in the table as he grips them for dear life. You decided to retaliate in the same cold facade the demon's putting up. I'm sorry, Vendrake, but I just don't think your management style is in line with my vision of our company. Perhaps your techniques have fallen out of time. Vendrake snorts briefly. Funny, I've never heard that complaint from any of the other demon lords before. Perhaps our lord just hasn't reached the caliber befitting of his title. How... Pitiful. His mouth and eyes contort into a wicked smile. A smile that makes you feel so small that you're still just running that you're still just running in the palm of Vendrake's hand. Anger surges through veins until the blue flame above your head practically erupts into a tower of fire. Enough. Sit. You swing your hand in front of you and unleash pressure. A wall of invisible energy pushes down on Vendrake's shoulder. The force is too much for Vendrake to withstand, and he falls like a sinking rock. The vibration of his fall topples Vendrake's chair, and it hits the general right on his head. Yeah. Vortis covers his mouth to stifle laughter, while Amara's extra hands pull out a camera to snap a photo of what happened. 
Bendrake silently picks himself back up and sits down without looking at anyone. Assuming the matter has been resolved, you take your seat as well. Can we just move on to the next agenda? Those in the room check their agenda sheets. Uh, right, then. Uh, next on the agenda is regarding sin ratings. The team in R&D want feedback on a new sin they discovered, replying to long messages online with a single word response. <laughs> okay. Fine. Which I just did, technically. With that, the rest of the meeting goes on, although you struggle to contribute much to the discussion. Your mind is adrift, and you'd rather be anywhere else but here. Still, you force yourself to remain somewhat aware until the end of the meeting. He's not having a good time. I think he just genuinely doesn't want this job and shouldn't be doing it, because he clearly is just drifting away and needs an escape. And that's everything for today's meeting. Uh, we'll meet again next week, same day, same place, as per the schedule. Until then. Nox is the first to leave, and just before Vendrake goes, you both exchange a dirty look with one another. Once Vendrake is gone, you quickly open your portal and take your leave. There is somewhere you need to be. Where is he? Vendrake paces, circling around the Demon Lord's desk, the very desk he has always been at the, do at the foot of, diligently serving his master's plans. Though usually calm and composed, the general was agitated for the, uh, to the nth degree after what happened in the meeting. <clears throat> How dare he strip me of my rank? Me, the first demon general, after many lifetimes of service. That insolent brat. Vendrick slams the desk hard with his fist. The vibration causes the pile of documents and the photograph on the desk to fall. He, grab, he grabs the frame and looks at the picture of the previous demon lord, eyes longing for the command of the superior leader. My lord, you will always be our true leader. The fates were cruel to take you away and to leave us with. Forgive me. I tried to teach young Kobu, but he has cast me aside. Until then, every demon lord has ser has ser until then, every demon lord he served had given Vendrick a sense of pride. He felt like he was the right-hand man of the greatest and most powerful being in all of creation. Oh, but how people can change. His stomach burns at the mere thought of taking orders from someone who is only demon lord by title and nothing else. His fingers creak as he considers all the lost potential in the underworld. Everything that Vendrake worked to protect is crumbling away in the hands of this pathetic excuse of a demon lord. If I were demon lord, I'd run this place differently. No more nonsense that will jeopardize everything we've built. Demons are meant to torture souls, and that's what they'll do processing souls day in and out. Then the glory of the underworld will be known to all, and the mortals will learn to fear us demons again. Why do his buttons get longer the lower they get down there? I just, I just noticed that. If only... If only I had a chance. I guess they're sideways. Yeah, they're tilted towards the uh, weight, like, perpendicular to the camera. Vendrick's monologue is interrupted by the sound of the office door opening slightly. Who's there? Vendrick opens his coat to reveal the monstrous mouth of his stomach. His second mouth begins to emanate an orange glow, ready to spew forth molten fire. Although there's, no one, although there's nothing there, he is aware of a presence with him in the room. A presence that wants to speak to him. Whispers surround him in all directions. I see. So it's you. I've only heard stories, but your presence here is an honor. I figured that I, I probably know where the narrative's going, which is that almost certainly uh, we're going to get dethroned as the as the Lord as the Emperor, or the you know the leader of this of the underworld, and Vendrake's going to supplant us, and the narrative is going to be us kind of crawling back. Kind of like when like Thor gets exiled in the first movie, or you know a lot of or or the Emperor's new close. 
Uh, Amber's New Groove, that's what it's called. <clears throat> he returns to a neutral stance and stands in contemplation while looking at the desk. The room fills with cold atmosphere, Vendrake a stoic pillar in the lifeless space. His eyes widen and become milky gray. He continues to speak, although no one is there. Yes, of course I can deliver. Help me be the Demon Lord, and I promise you won't regret it. The cool atmosphere was gone in a thrumping heartbeat. Thumping, probably. Vendrake's eyes return to normal as he looks around, somewhat perplexed. His memory of the past minutes is a bit foggy, but he feels a strange confidence in himself. Confidence and a sudden stroke of brilliance. He leans into the seat and steeples his fingers together. A wide smile grows across his face, which also reaches the gaping mouth in his stomach. Yes, this will do nicely. Behind the door of the Demon Lord's office, a hooded knock sits waiting on the other side. He hears the sound of Vendrick opening a portal. Without saying anything, he cloaks himself in invisibility and retreats into the shadows. What happened there? You stand in silence on a riverbank illuminated by an artificial light floating in the sky. As far as the eye can see, there's only the gravel beneath your feet and the dark river before you, leading deeper into the darkness of the underworld. This is a special floor. You call it the last floor, a misnomer as there is no last floor in the underworld. Instead, it is the final resting place of all demon lords. It was here you attended your father's funeral. You listen to the murmur of the running river water and remember the day you held onto the boat that your father's body was placed in. Pa, I don't know if you can hear me. I've been messing up pretty badly. Your heart aches as though you... Your heart aches as thoughts about how you haven't changed one bit from the weak little demon that stood by these river banks before. I really wish you were here, Pa. I don't know what to do anymore. I am really wondering if I will be the first demon lord ever to quit. That's even possible. You hear the sound of a portal opening behind you. Boss. You turn around and see Fortis and Amer side by side. We were concerned about you, Lord Kobo. Overwhelmed by tiredness, you cannot even fake a smile. Sorry, I made you guys worry. I just wanted to come and take in the scenery. Oh, no. You can't say that after the scene you pulled back in the meeting room. I say this for myself, but Vendrick deserved it. That demon is always going on and on about regulations and messing, up, messing with my creations. A mare. Ordus approaches you and puts on a hand on your shoulder. Where's your fire, boy? Where's the demon that I trained when he was just in diapers? Where's where's your fight back? I, I don't know, Fortis. Maybe it's gone. Maybe I never had it in the first place. I can help you look if you need help. And there steps in next to Fortis. Finding things is a lot easier with more hands. His floating appendages rise up to wave at you, despite being bogged down by your sullen stare. A small smile breaks through. Thanks for the offer, Amer. Thank you. Uh, thing is, I am not sure finding the spirit to fight back is enough to keep me here. It's not just the mistakes. I don't know if I have any purpose in this company. You want to quit? I... Ortis suddenly pulls you into a bear hug and buries your face into his chest. Uh, you can't give up, boss! Ortis, you're suffocating our lord! And your tits! Your massive tits! A man grabs hold of the large demon's arms with his, with his hands and tries to pull him away, but Ortis is just too strong. Whoop. Bye. 
Or you're you, and you're gonna have a hard time becoming a demon lord. But you shouldn't see yourself as a failure. You just need to keep trying and you'll get it somehow. Or just frees you from his hug and you and you pull your head out with a loud gasp. Man, your cologne is strong. Cologne? I don't wear cologne. All natural musk. <laughs> you take a sh few short breaths before continuing to speak. Ortis, Amer, thanks for worrying about me. I think I have a long, I have to think long and hard about this. We'll be here for you, my lord. Yeah, give it some time. At least you're willing to think about it. You sigh, but maintain a small, hopeful smile, knowing that your allies do care about you. What do you say if we go back to my office and just play a round of go-kart racing with some drinks? I'm game. I'll beat all your butts. Not if I get the blue star first. You open a portal and the three of you head for the office. A massacre follows. <laughs> The moment the three of you step into your office, you sense a heavy tension in the air. Vendrake is standing in front of your desk with his hands behind his back. Vendrake, what are you doing here? Vendrake observes you with a stoic face, yet there is something about his eyes. The way his eyes are fixated on you portrays his preoccupation on a single thought, one that you're unable to tell. Now's not a good time to look for trouble with the boss, Vendrake. Another portal opens and Nox appears. Nox, why are you here? Vendrake summoned me. He said there was an important announcement. Yes, it's very important. It's a very important announcement, and I wanted everyone to be here. Oh, that's new. From behind his back, he pulls a short scepter, its length made from solid gold. An enchanting, blood-red ruby sits at the top, clenched within Vendrake's demonic claws. Vendrake's eyes glow a haunting yellow, and a strange surge of power cackles through the air, originating from Vendrake's scepter. Vendrake? Where'd you get those? Yeah, quit fooling around with your toys and give the boss his office back. I don't think so. That babbling slacker has wasted the underworld's time and will tarnish the title of Demon Lord no more. Vendrick, you don't want to do this. Vendrick points the blue sphere at you and a bolt of lightning fires forth. The blast moving with such speed that you have no time to move. It hits you square in the chest, sending you flying back. You slam against the bookshelves behind you, gasping as the force knocks the breath out of you. Treason! The imposing demon rushes for the second in command. Vendrake sees their approach coming, taking a bag of coal he keeps in his belt and throwing it into the gaping mouth that's part of his stomach. Y useless. The demon's stomach's open. St the demon's stomach opens up its hatch and a bright fireball fires from the abyss of his belly, hitting Fortis straight on. That it's is a typo. Fortis staggers back and falls to his knees. What? He, is nev he was never that strong before. Fortis clutches his stomach in pain. A bright pool of blood forms around him. You struggle to pull yourself up. Through blurred eyes, you see Fortis injured. Fortis. Whatever happened to Vendrick is no joke. Even the physically strongest of the generals couldn't stand back up from that attack. You fight through the stabbing pain coming from where the blast hit you in the chest and manage to stand up. Amer, looking confused, pulls out his gun on the second in command. Uh oh. Enough of this, Vendrick. Go ahead and try. You don't understand the power I wield. As long as I have this scepter, I am as powerful as any demon lord. Just shut the fuck up. I'm the demon lord, 
And you said yourself, you said yourself plenty. You extend your hand to impart pressure upon Vendrake, but only a weak wall of energy falls upon him. Its force is no stronger than a regular mortal trying to hold Vendrake down. What? My powers? Vendrake easily breaks free from your pressure in a wave, with a wave of his scepter. Ah. Huh. Guess an old war relic isn't so effective after a thousand, a few thousand years. No matter. You're no more powerful than a mere hatchling now. Vendrake looks on with a malicious smile. You don't seem pleased. You should be glad. Amer fires a shot from his gun, but Vendrake quickly knocks the shot to the ground by spinning a scepter. Fool. Ah! No! Just stop him, Nox! The frog demon does not budge from where he stands. Nox? What are you doing? He backs away and casts barriers onto the other two generals, effectively sealing them away from the battle. No! I figured that was what's going on. Good. You see. Nox knows when he sees a real leader. Now for you. With his free hand, he points at you. Lifting a scepter high in the air, it begins to charge a bright green ball of energy. Vendrake steps forward, closing the gap between the two of you. The end of your short-lived reign and life encroaching further. Run, my lord! But you can't run. Your legs feel like sandbags. You don't have the strength to move them. For, f for too long, you've treated me like crap. After the thousands of years of service I gave to every demon lord, it ends here. Today marks the age of my reckoning. He leans in closer to you. Your time is over, Kobu. No one's going to save you. Especially not them. If you're gonna kill me, save me the boring monologue. Even when death stares you down, you still want the easy way out. Before I give you death, I'll make sure to beat it into you. How much of a f you're a failure of a demon. He waves his scepter and your body flies like a ragdoll across the room, smashing through the bookshelves. Vendrick tosses you into the air again, firing a blast of green energy at you. Ah! You scream in agony as you feel like your entire body is set on fire. Collapsing onto the ground, you're unable to move. Vendrick walks over to you, ready to plunge the sharp edge of his scepter through your head. Die, Kobu. You feel time slow as Vendrick, Vendrick's attack nears you. Mustering whatever power you have left, you desperately try to open a portal beneath you. It does not matter where. You just need to get away. An intense heat emanates from the palm of your right hand. You yell as you feel as though the heat is consuming your entire right hand. A blue portal opens, and you fall through. <clears throat> Vendrake's scepter misses you and smashes the spot your head was lying on. No. The next thing you know, you're lying face first in the middle of a street. Shrouded by darkness. Yeah, they, they set up. They set up uh, Nox as the mental torturer. So I figure Nox probably brainwashed uh, Vendrick. Like there was like the a level of suggestibility that could be used because Vendrick resents Kobu, but it seems like he wasn't ready to actually uh, do what he did. But there was the weird eyes turning gray thing, and then he kind of forgot what just happened, and it seems like it was manipulation. I... You let out a forced breath of air. I... With shaking hands, you try to conjure up a portal, but nothing happens. Fuck you. Fuck you, Vendrake. You collapse to the ground as your vision succumbs to the darkness. And now you get to be a regular human on... Well, not a human, but you get to be a person on Earth. 
two years have passed since that day. You gotta have a character arc where you grow to be a strong. You gotta, you gotta have a coming of age story, but uh, from but like with the type you have for like nobility characters. It's the dead of night, and all those who reside in the kingdom, in the town of Kibbletown, Kibbleton. Okay, I don't know why I said kingdom. I guess I saw Kibble and just I like mashed everything together. Who reside in the town of Kibbleton are asleep. Not a single soul notices a blue portal. A sky blue portal opening in the middle of the vacant streets. A figure emerges and looking ar and looks around, amused by their surroundings. So this is where you've been hiding all this time. When a bell rings. So that's an angel, right? If everyone else is a demon. Extremely clean cut person covered in gold and stuff with very bright coloration. Bright pale. Ding dong, bing bong. Real life, it'd be a Sonic the Hedgehog sound. The store, the store's door chimes the mundane tune it sings for each and every soul. Welcome to Sunny Fruits, the family market. The customer ignores your greeting and heads down the drink aisle. You watch as the customer indecisively peruses their options in the corner of your eyes. A brassy jazz theme continues to mumble from the cheap store stereo system. It's a playlist that loops every 30 minutes. Long enough that the average customer is sated, but short enough to drive employees insane. Welcome. Now you're in the underworld, huh? The customer picks up a can of cola from one aisle and a frozen dinner from the back. Approaching the counter, he dumps it all in front of you unceremoniously. Your fur stands on end at the sight of the frozen dinner's nondescript reverse packaging. You reach out apprehensively. Please don't be chicken. Please don't be chicken. You flip the container over. It's a meal labeled Bro Broccoli Supreme. Your anxiety quickly fades away. You have an anxiety for chicken? I don't... What? Putting on your best welcoming smile... You start scanning the items. Would you like that heated up for you? The customer shakes his head and drops the exact change on the counter, which has never happened in the history of anything. Just as the receipt printer begins to whir, he's left the store, items in hand. Rip, scrunch, thud. You visibly slump as you tear off and dispose of the useless receipt. Your phone comes out without thinking, your hand engulfing the cheap device you use just to get by. Who cares about having something fancy when it just needs to make calls and send texts? That's exactly... <laughs> I always get really shitty phones usually because I'm like, who? I don't need... Why would I need a good phone? It does... It just sends and receives messages. It loads Twitter, I guess. The digital clock shows it's 15 minutes to 12. Your shift is about to end. Good. At least there aren't any more customers coming in. Then I can... Can what? Oh, what the? You nearly drop your phone when your manager appears to your right, seeming out of nowhere. Uh, uh, King, don't do that. While backing away from your manager's sleepy stare, you stuff your phone back in your pants. What? Not my fault you weren't paying attention to me standing next to you. The slim alpaca puts his hands on his hips and smiles warmly at you. He says that, but he's a sneaky bugger. He's snuck up on you so many times, you you know no amount of complaining will stop him, so you leave it be. Maybe there really is something wrong with you. I was thinking, that's all. Was it the last fro frozen chicken dinner? Nailed it. King's got a killer gut instinct. You can't help but admire him for it. He notices things about people more easily than the other... The other mortals you've met. His natural talent is surely why he's he earned his rank as manager at this convenience store. Is it because he want is it because he wants to take one the last one home with him? I think that's the implication. But that keen eye will only bring you misfortune if he sees what you really are. You smile sheepishly back at him. How do you eat those things every day? There's enough calories in them to feed two people. It's cheap and filling. What else? Well, forget it today. Here, I made you lunch. K 
King, I, I can't. I insist. Don't make me waste food. You can't work if you're not eating right. He looks at you with pleading eyes and a wry smile. You relent, smiling back at King. Okay, if you insist. But let me buy the drinks. Lemon iced tea good for you? You got it, big boy! By the way, you might want to pick something with less caffeine in it. He winks at you. I'll meet you outside with the... After I hand... I'll meet you outside after I hand over the pay bag to Team B. The alpaca walks away from uh, to the break room with a skip and a step. Shaking your head, you walk over to the drink aisle. Yep. He called you out again. He knows you haven't been sleeping much lately after you bought that new MMO expansion pack. And yes, you did pump half your last paycheck into a level skip for your main class. It's a blessing he's offering you lunch. What? If you like MMOs, then why would you pay to play them less? Why are people like this? Gender? Let's... <laughs> The members of Team B arrive for their shift a few minutes later, a brother-sister pair that greet you with a warm hello. They they hired family members and shifted them? Okay. You meekly, you meekly nod in response to, and, and quickly regret why you didn't just say hello back to them. King talks to the brother about the day's money bag handover while you head to the back to, unpack, uh, to pack your things. I'm choking. It's vague 7-Eleven-like substance. <laughs> you wait outside for King to finish conversing with the siblings. There's something threatening about that giant, flat, billboard-shaped nothing. Good weather for drying clothes today. The warm afternoon breeze blows against your mane, wafting the scent of different cooked foods from the plethora of restaurants in front of the convenience store. Your stomach growls audibly. Kept you waiting, huh? The alpaca paces over to you. So, where are we having lunch? The usual spot? The usual spot it is, then. Lead the way. Both of you walk side by side to the semi-busy street. Neither of them are changing their shirts. The daily workforce are out for their lunch. They walk by without so much as a glance at you both. You pull out your phone. Its screen is cracked in the bottom right corner, a, a memento of its previous owner. You're still using that phone? Yeah, it works. I thought you'd have enough saved for a new one already. I could've, but it just feels right to keep this one. Makes me think I should've given you a better phone. With your college fees, it's fine. This was the best you could afford. Ha, <laughs> true. So. How were things back in the shop? The brother looked like he had much to say. Brother? He has a name, you know. Don't tell me you forgot it. The only names I need to know are yours and the other NPCs in my game. What? <laughs> this game. This game full of NPCs. <laughs> With that kind of attitude, how do you expect to be a manager someday? Oh god, look at that. That's a new face we haven't seen yet. I never said I wanted to be a manager. Now, come on, his name. I want to say... Michael? It's Mike. He's doing well. He and his sister, Anna. The alpaca leans in close to your face and raises his voice to emphasize her name. They really appreciate us taking their shifts uh, so they can take care of their sick grandma. Is she getting better? Mm-hmm. They say your health is improving, and as a show of thanks, if we ever need them to cover our shifts, they'll do it with no questions asked. Great. Then we can have them take one of my one of our day shifts so we can have an all-night game session like last time. Divine Destiny for, uh, 14? Final, Desti Final, Final Fantasy 14. The game I said I just did a stream of in the middle of this episode. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's been a month since I've even touched it. I've been swamped after classes. Did you see the video I sent you on how to take down the Underworld Overlord boss? <laughs> I... I skimmed through it. How can you skim through that? It's a half hour battle that requires a full team and proper strategizing. You just don't stand in the scary circles. 
King crosses his arms in a huff and raises an eyebrow at you. Don't get your fleece in a bunch. There's tons of other stuff we can do. Like dungeons, dailies. Plus, you you know, maybe the overlord is not such a bad guy. Who are we to judge? The alpaca stares at you, dumbfounded. You must be the dullest adventurer ever. And you're a walking rainbow lollipop. Honey, you wish you could have a lick like this. He flicks his brightly colored pompadour and bats his long, lush lashes at you. I'll lick your fleece back to its natural color. He slaps you lightly on the shoulder and you both burst out into laughter. You continue walking to the park through the winding roads that have come to define this town. Even though you've been here for over a year, you can get lost when you need to go somewhere you've rarely been. Your experience is a testament to the legends about how the town was built based on a maze-like structure to, to confuse demons and evil spirits from finding their victims. That's noteworthy, given the story. Makes it hard for even a demon like yourself to find a public restroom. After 20 minutes of turning from one street to the next, you both reach an intersection across from the park. Oh crap, it's those guys! Buzzing around the main entrance are a group comprised of six goons dressed in matching black hoodies. They're peddling pamphlets and asking pa uh, people passing by to sign some petition. We should go around, take the side entrance. But our spot is closest through the main entrance. I know, but that group always gives me a bad feeling. Maybe it's best if we avoid them. Fine. You both cross the street and head for the walkway to the right of the main entrance. Making a beeline, you slip through unnoticed by the group guarding the gate. The stealth game has begun. <laughs> They're setting up, uh, they're definitely setting something up there. That group's definitely coming up later. The side entrance to the park is within your view. This is it. We're almost there. Well, there they are. Weird emblems. Goofy, goofy wolf ear hats. Every NPC in this game that doesn't have a face is a wolf. And none of the characters are wolves. Then a pair of hooded figures steps out from the entrance to halt your way. Why, hello there, fellow townsfolk of Kibbleton. Fuck. Your right hand instinctive, instinctively moves over to cover King. We don't want anything you're selling. But we're not selling anything. In fact, we're giving away a great opportunity to find happiness. A chance to be free. A chance to take control of your own destiny. Sure, sure, thank you, but I am fine with my destiny. Now, please move aside. Your tone is harsh, but these two aren't taking the hint. They continue staring at you with glazed eyes. Oh, new potential members. Come, come, you must read our teacher's wise words on how to live a longer, more prosperous life. Membership is open. Learn the secrets of, o of overcoming death. Three more of them emerge from the park entrance and surround you both. Uh, Kovu! What the f- Oh, well, this is not- uh, This guy just got kidnapped. <laughs> they invade your personal space and basically stampede towards you both. The three new hooded members manage to split you and King apart. He's dragged a few steps away as they corner him against the wall. Listen. You have a family or friends you care about, right? Don't you want to protect them? Don't you know people are dying faster than ever before? You don't know when the cold hands of death will be knocking on your doorstep, but we do. The great teacher knows all. All you have to do is join us. Wait. You raise your hands up trying to get them to stop. Fulfill your purpose in life. Join the dawn seekers and you'll be set for life. But I... Our teacher knows the way. He can save you. He can save all of us. With every word, you fear yourself getting pushed into a corner. You don't want to spend an eternity in hell, do you? A step closer. Save your soul. This is the only chance. And closer. 
New members get a brand new air fryer. <laughs> An air fryer that comes in five different color options. Embrace destiny and a healthier lifestyle. Ah. Their voices seem to crescendo as they go on and on about their group. You're trapped. You struggle to think of... You struggle... Bleh. You struggle to think as every thought is cut off by their continuous chatter. Pults are nothing new. Dozens of them arrive in the underworld and on a daily basis. Though meeting them in real life is more annoying than having mosquitoes buzzing around your ear after a hot summer's afternoon. Annoyed, you turn to see where, where King is. His face is pale, and even his brightly colored fleece seems deflated. He's reaching out to sign some kind of document. Stop! Your sudden outburst stuns nearly... St stuns everyone nearby, effectively silencing the hooded characters who were harassing you. They back away, letting you walk over to King. You yank him by the arm as he stumbles to get walking. We're leaving, and don't any of you bother us again. You pull King harder than you intended to, and guide him into the park. The hooded people mutter about amongst themselves, but you don't hear them. Your sole focus is getting to, the, to your spot. Well, you reach the bench you were looking for, a single seat facing the, park man, the park's man-made river. The branches of the tall trees huddle together to shade the bench from the sun's rays. Sitting on the park bench, you drape your arms on the backrest and pant exhaustedly. Wow, you're really out of shape if you're that tired from walking. King bends over the bench while trying to catch his breath. We... We weren't walking. It was like a... You cough. A sprint. King chuckles heartily and sits next to you. I thought he used his powers or something to make them leave. You got the drinks? Yeah. In my bag. Help yourself. You point to the black backpack next to your leg. He grabs a bag and pulls out two bottles of lemon iced tea. Here. Take a bottle from King and down the reinvigorating tea in one big gulp. Slumping back against the bench, you let a loud gasp as you pull the bottle away from your mouth. Can't believe they just ganged up on us like that. Someone should do something about them. Like who? The police? Shouldn't they be handling these kinds of cases? Well, I'm making a report. You know it won't work. King pulls out his phone and calls someone. Hello? Yes, hi. This is King Domrick. I would like to make a report. Yeah, some group in Black Hoods in the park tried to harass me into joining them. I think they're a cult. What do you mean it isn't the job of, for the police? They're harassing people on the streets. No, they're not hurting anyone. So what? You're just gonna leave them be? Then what's the point of having you guys? Where am I supposed to go? The gang? Are you kidding me? Stop laughing at me. We need help. Are you just gonna let these weirdos run the streets? No, I am not being hysterical. King suddenly gasps. What did you just call me, miss? That's it. I'm obviously getting nowhere with this. Goodbye. King angrily hangs up and sits next to you in a huff. Told you. What'd you expect to happen? The cops here are in the gang's pockets. Those black hoods probably work under the radar of the gang. That's why nothing. That's why nothing's been done about them. This is so frustrating. He rubs his temples as though trying to rub the memory of the phone call away. Can we maybe just eat and move on? Let's. King grabs his bag and passes a blue Tupperware container to you. He pulls out a matching green container for himself. You open the top and feel the gentle heat wafting through your fingertips. It's a lunch box with, box with two compartments. One side is a bed of rice, the other an assortment of fried chicken and a bed of crisp salad. It's the Overlord. On top of the rice are some steamed mustard greens and cut carrots arranged in the shape of Divine Destiny of the Divine Destiny 14 boss. How? 
King leans over to look at the lunchbox. Thank God it all stayed in one place when we were running. You notice that his eyes are on you now, so you smile warmly. Thanks, man. This is really impressive. Say that after you've tried it. I know you haven't beaten the over Overlord in-game, but at least you can beat him with your stomach. Or uh, he nudges you the <laughs> nudges the side of your belly. You roll your eyes in the, at the alpaca, 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 and proceed to dig in. Mmm, this chicken is really juicy and tender. Thanks, I worked hard on seasoning it just right. King's lunchbox is the same as yours, minus the decoration. Trade you my carrot for a piece of chicken? Or trade you my carrot for a piece of chicken? What? No, I put those there for you. Plus, mine's actually tofu, it's not chicken. Weakling. The branches sway and rustle as you fill your stomach with the overlord king prepared. So damn sweet. After the meal, you both leave the park when the coast is clear. By the time you part ways with King, the sun has begun to set. When nothing better to, around town, you return to your apartment. I'm about ready to wrap up because we're pretty far in, but I'm, I'm waiting. To, I'm hoping to see if the angel shows up and gives us more of a, a setup to end on, I guess, for a preview. <clears throat> your apartment building is tucked in a faraway corner of the town, as though it wished no one would find it. An odd dissonance fills you whenever you return to this part of the town. In contrast to the rest of the town, this place is devoid of business, or life for that matter. A dead end is one way to put it. Not that you're complaining. You walk up the flight of stairs to the first floor, where your room is. The screeching of a singing contest on the TV from the room below accompanies your climb. A typical apartment owner, an elderly man of few words, he is content as long as you pay your rent on time and don't stir up any trouble. Your key fits into the doorknob, and you enter your room. Honey, I'm home. The silence of your mildly furnished apartment welcomes you back. Your current living arrangements are a far cry from what you had back in the underworld. The current unit you live in has, the very, has very basic accommodations. One living room that doubles as your bedroom and dining room. One washroom with a shower head that only sprays cold water, a washing machine, and a toilet next to it. Then there's the tight-spaced kitchen that just barely accommodates you and the relic of a refrigerator. And yet, this is all you could ever ask for. Dropping your bag on the floor, you walk over to the beanbag in front of the TV and start up your console. I should probably do my laundry while, while I shower later, but first... Let's squeeze in a round of dailies. That's the last you think of your laundry, or chores for that matter, for the rest of the day. Video game addictions. You are misbehaving. Oh, we're back in the in the world where they're gonna be establishing uh, under the iron rule of dickhead, things suck, and I'm sad. I miss our lion, dude. All right, I think we're gonna call it here. I think we we got we got the basic setup here. If you want to check this game out for yourself. There is a link to the itch.io page in the description. It is free, or pay what you want. And it, it, I, I got to check it out. I want, I want to see what it was like because the art style is all cool, and it was cool to, to spend some time with it. Thanks for watching, like always, guys, and I'll see you next time.